Good afternoon. It's now quarter past one, and I'd like to start this first session of the face-to-face -face, um, part of our annual conference. Good afternoon. I'm Stephen Carter. I'm the chair of the Chartered Institute for Archaeologists. I'd like to welcome everyone in the room to Bath and the start of the face-to-face -face sessions of CIFA 2022, the annual conference of our institute. I'd also like to welcome everyone who's attending the conference remotely. For all of you, this is day three of the conference. Encouraged by the success of our first digital conference last year and the gradual safe return to live events, conference is being run this year for the very first time as a week-long hybrid programme. This introductory session in Bath is our first truly hybrid session. Digital attendees, you'll find that the experience has changed a little from what you had on Monday and Tuesday. And we're now using Symphony instead of Zoom. But I hope this works well for you and that you'll continue to engage with the hybrid sessions. As this is our first foray into a truly hybrid event, we may need to ask for patience, some forgiveness, and most importantly, your feedback at the end about how you thought the event went. We don't think everything will be perfect. So a particular thank you to all our session organizers and speakers for taking on the hybrid format with its benefits and challenges. So thank you all for coming. It's been a difficult two years. We had planned to be in Bath in 2020 and again in 2021. So we're really pleased to finally gather together again, both in person and online. We had a very good show of financial support for the provision of bursary places this year. And as a result, we've been able to offer over 25 bursary and early careers places, helping to make CIFA 2022 more accessible for students, those in early career, and um, those on lower incomes as well. I hope if you're attending the first CIFA conference, you'll find it enjoyable and a rewarding experience. And now to some acknowledgements. First of all, I would like to thank Towergate Insurance as the major sponsor of CIFA 2022. Towergate has supported CIFA annual conference for over 10 years and we really appreciate this long-term support. Towergate is also CIFA's insurer and have given us good advice on insurance matters over many years. And they do have a stand in the hall next door if you'd like to talk to them. Thank you also particularly to Historic England for their continued and valued support for our annual conference. Um, this isn't only financial support, and we also really appreciate um, the support we get from their staff who attend and present at the conference regularly. And last but not least, I would like to thank the staff at CIFA for their collective efforts in planning and delivering this novel hybrid conference. It can be invidious to name individuals, but I'd like to particularly thank Ellie Durst, our events manager, Leanne Burney, and Alex Llewellyn. That ends my introductory remarks, and it's now time to move on to our keynote address. And so I'd like to ask Chief Executive of CIFA, Peter Hinton, to introduce our speaker, Kate Clark. Thank you, Stephen. Well, Kate, as you may have detected, has come all the way from, I'm coming out, all the way from Canberra to, uh, to enjoy our English spring. No doubt with the words of Robert Browning ringing in her ears, oh, to be in England now that April's here. Um, Robert Browning, of course, wrote those when he was pining for the glories of an English spring, um, exiled, poor thing, in, in Tuscany. Um, T.S. Eliot, on the other hand, wrote that April is the cruelest month. But he wasn't talking about hailstones and sleet and snow, which are a, a common feature of April. Um, he was r referring really to, well, 
like, like Browning, he, he enjoyed spring. Uh, he, he liked the idea of the, the song thrush's first sweet um, careless rapture at dawn. And, and he liked the bloom and the blossom and the bunnies, but he thought they were all a false promise. Um, the Wasteland, um, the, the poem I quoted from, was published 100 years ago this year, in 1922, when the world was recovering from a respiratory pandemic that had killed millions of people. It was recovering from a world war. And for Eliot, it felt almost like all hope of spring growth and optimism was extinguished. But as his poem develops, it promises some new kind of leader, some kind of visionary, um, a savior, possibly mythical, possibly, possibly immortal, who would bring light, color, and hope to our world. Kate Clark is an industrial archaeologist and very much more. <laughs> she has a career um, that spans Ironbridge Gorge Museums, the CBA, English Heritage, Heritage Lottery Fund, Sydney Living Museums, CADU, and also a lot of pro bono work for your Chartered Institute, including um, its council way back in the 1990s, uh, the Buildings Archaeology Group, a lot of work on conferences, and, and, and recently some engagement also with, with C for Australia. Kate is a leading thinker on the value of heritage, um, but she doesn't just think about it. She's been putting those thoughts into policy, putting policy into action, and evaluating the impact of those actions. I can't name all of her publications and her projects, but if I say words like informed conservation, uh, I think you, you will recognize her pedigree. She's currently enrolled uh, on a PhD at the University of Canberra uh, with uh, Australia ICOMOS, looking at embedding the values that we get from heritage, economic, social, environmental, into mainstream, wider government policy. Uh, she's also written a book. Kate, wave your book. Um, available from all good bookshops now, Playing with the Past, which is a, a learning handbook for, for, for community leaders uh, working with, with, with um, heritage. Uh, and it's definitely an easy read, much, much recommended. Uh, so enough from me. Kate is going to talk to us about thinking about the value of archeology. span So Kate, over to you.